So it says here, he went out. Now I want you to notice closely. This is the nature of his going out. He went out knowing not where he went. He didn't know where he was going. Now the important question is knowing who called you, not where you are going. That comes later. He knew who called him. He responded to the call. And that's the single most important question. It doesn't matter who, what. All these things will resolve themselves later. We have the idea that it's all in a straight line. You know, we must join all the dots. That's how uh, we get into the will of God, how things work out. We have it all planned out. But that's not the way it works. That's not how the way uh, it worked for the Lord too. There is no plan B for the Lord. He just entrusted uh, his disciples with that commission. And what if it's not done? It's not done. There is no plan B. And so it is the same for us all the time. He went out not knowing where he went. But he knew who called him. So this is what commitment is. Loyalty to the person who called you. Loyalty is something that springs out of relationship. Normally we tend to think in terms of priority. I'll do this first, second, this is more important. The more important thing is loyalty to Jesus Christ and not just priority. So this is the fourth C, commitment, accountability. So we are accountable to all he has called us to. The last one, we are going to go into Luke's Gospel so that at least we have a glimpse into each of the four Gospels and what their versions of the Great Commission are, right? Uh, we have looked at John a little bit. So let's look at good old Dr. Luke. Now Dr. Luke, you know, wrote one Gospel and the only sequel to the Gospel, which is Acts. So we have left this to the last. So let's look at Luke 24, where his version of the Great Commission is. What is this last C? I'll just call it communication, because we are talking about how the Gospel is communicated or spread how it actually moves out, all right? And Luke gives us an account of this. And the spiritual state or condition, uh, what is it about? And now finally, then we come to the A word, which is ability. So when we talk about communication, this is where ability comes in. Uh, it's not plucked out of the, of the air, it comes out of the scripture, and we'll see by and by. Let's look at Luke, Chapter 24, his last chapter, and he says in verse 49, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry or wait you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. So we see there the word power again, right? English Bible, English word. But this is the other Greek word. It's not exousia, which means authority. It is dunamis, which is ability. Now the focus here is on ability. Historically then, they were asked to wait for the promise of the Father, which is the fullness of the coming of the Holy Spirit. He will endue you with ability from on high. It takes the mighty power of the Holy Spirit to give us that God-given, anointed ability to be able to carry out and fulfill the Great Commission. It's not just you and me trying our level best to do something about it. That will not do. It will not bring the results. It will not give fruit. It requires the Holy Spirit's empowering. So this is where we get ability. Now let's look at his sequel. So if you just turn over to Acts chapter 1, 
because this is where the story continues after the Gospels. And here's Dr. Luke, same author, writing. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, I'll just zoom straight in on this verse. It's a key verse. What does it say? It says, but you shall receive ability. Dunamis again, right? You shall receive power. You shall receive dunamis or ability. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now here we have a divine pattern or configuration given to us for the communication of the gospel. And it's a very neat one. Uh, in fact, I use this all the time in my, in my daily prayers for, for my own ministry. You can also use the same. There are four concentric rings or circles, right? If you like, you can think of it that way. Jerusalem, uh, that's the capital of Israel anyway. One day it's going to be the capital of the world in the Millennial Kingdom. But that's Jerusalem. And then after that, surrounding it is the region of Judea, of which Jerusalem is also the regional capital. And then after Judea, you have Samaria. And then you have the utmost parts of the earth. Right? Now let me comment a little bit about this mental model. Uh, it may be helpful in some ways, but in other ways it's not helpful. Now when we think of missions, our mental model tends to be the old model inherited from the colonial era, the age of empires, you know? The, the game, if you play that computer game, Age of Empires, right? It's, it's this uh, wave of missions. And uh, the idea is that it is location-based. The locus, the definition, you know, of, of missions is based on geographical location. But truly, it isn't. The locus is not location, but generation. It's people. It's people who are contemporary with us. Just like David served God in his own generation. And you and I must serve God in our own generation. If I'm dead and gone, there's no way that I can serve God anymore. If I'm still around and uh, the older generations have gone by, there is no way that I can do something.